So one of the most exciting cases that we saw at CES this year just landed here in the studio. It's the new Lee and Lee. Let's see if we can feel the difference. Oh, the new O11 Dynamic from Lee and Lee. I have both black and white versions. I feel like I'm gonna go with the white one for now. Wow. I spent so much time b-rolling. Good thing there's boot sequence to catch me up on all the news, eh? All right, good people. So the PC 011 from Lee & Lee is finally here. I'm super excited and it potentially might replace my current enclosure if I'm uh, you know, feeling optimistic about its airflow uh, options. So let's review right after this. Finally, an ultra slim body keyboard with mechanical red or blue switches designed and perfected for work and play. The Tesoro Grim XS evolved to fit right in. Check it out below. All right, so I'm going to cut straight to the chase. I think Lian Li is going in the right direction with the O11 Dynamic, and this is my favorite case yet from the company. You can kind of tell this is Lian Li's chassis based on this dual chamber design, but they've almost completely moved away from the aluminum, so the entire frame is just steel, glass panels, and this small brushed aluminum section on the right side of the front panel. It especially looks good on the white model, and I appreciate this elegant touch away from your fingerprints. And it's exactly this material choice is how they're able to achieve a super competitive price point of $129 that is available in two colors, with the black one going for a special pre-order price of $99 for the next two weeks. So check it out below. But I'm really happy to see Ali and Lee being aggressive and branch out into the sub $200 market. But what's interesting about this frame design is the lack of any exterior branding. So they're clearly confident in this product, but the inclusion of this plaque on the inside reveals their collaboration with Der Bauer, a talented German overclocker who has been involved in this whole redesign of the O11. So thank you, Roman. Now, if you're seeing this type of dual frame for the first time and wondering why the front panel is covered in glass, this is actually not another fat to kill airflow as the interior is actually well designed for radiator support, which is why all sides have this cool ventilation pattern. So a quick note about the white frame, there is a slight color mismatch between the metal side panel and the plastic case feet, but otherwise, attention to detail is awesome, like refined edges on the exterior plating, a completely chrome I.O. to match the aluminum, plus a Type-C Gen 2 port is here with appropriate motherboard connector, plus the glass is only tinted without the color cast. And the only compromise here would be handling because the case doesn't have anything in the front to grab it by like normally. So the side openings are kind of there so you can grab it like so and move it around. I really like their approach to side panel installation. So all three sides utilize a drop-in approach with small inserts up top and at the bottom that tightly fit the panel so it doesn't like wobble around the frame that is further secured by the top panel with convenient captive thumb screws. This way all sides remain super clean so there are no thumb screws sticking out, but you will need to remove two panels minimum to gain access on the interior. Up top, we have a dust filter that sits inside this small cavity to not interfere with the panel above it. You can mount a 360 rad, no problem, or a 280 mil. And I kind of wish that this was a bracket to simplify installation outside of the case. And one thing you'll notice is the lack of any fan mounts at the rear because this entire motherboard section is slimmer than usual. And moving inside, I hope we'll see similar layouts as this in the future. So one big chamber for the main hardware, including e ATX motherboard support, a 360 rad at the bottom, although two SSD caddies must be removed and unfortunately you cannot remount them anywhere else on the case and it does block four PCI slots. And so this is where the side radiator mount is important. A 360 can go in here without interfering with the motherboard nor the GPU because the mounting tray is pushed out closer to the side panel and you can still have a 360 rad up top with a 360 on the side. And I appreciate that all of the ATX motherboard standoffs are pre-installed 
installed, but the two bottom cable cutouts are bare, so only the large ones get the rubber treatment. I do appreciate the black and white PCI slots though for that visual complement of this white and black frame. And so the one major advantage of moving the power supply area and storage at the back with this dual chamber design is height. Look at this. The PCO11 is the same height as the 275R from Corsair, which I would consider to be like your standard size mid tower. Look at them. They're exactly identical in height, yet uh, because we don't have any power supply shroud here, we have all that additional room upstairs for radiator support. We do have to acknowledge that the case is wider because of this dual chamber layout, but look at that. It's not that much wider than your standard mid tower, so having the power supply rotated uh, in this uh, rear chamber is actually pretty genius. Really hoping more companies start to take this route for frame design in the future. The right side panel has two dust filters, one spanning the power supply area and the other for the fan area. And in the rear chamber, we get a cover bracket. The only piece actually to include a Lee and Lee logo, very discreet, I like it, that can also house dual SSDs or a three and a half inch drive. And there's a proper drive cage above the power supply with two drive caddies. I also like how the side fan area has enough clearance for push pull mount, or let's say you want a thicker radiator on the inside, you can still mount a fan on the outside of that fan mount. Now, I'm not sure why, but this case supports dual power supplies, one at the bottom over here and another over here if you remove the drive cage. Now, the thing is, if you have this drive bracket, the top power supply has to be a little bit shorter in order to uh, have compatibility with cables, whereas the bottom one has this cutout here. So, you know, power supply length is not really an issue. But yeah, dual power supplies inside this frame, if you want to combine multiple power supplies to potentially power your system, that is, of course, an option. All right, so that's the overview. Now, let's build in this sucker. And so here's the finished system. I just might transition my Coffee Lake machine in here with the white and black hardware because the experience was super smooth. The 360 all-in-one is perfect fit on the side. Even if my GPU extended beyond the motherboard, you know, even further, I'd still be okay because the motherboard is high enough to clear a set of fans and a radiator on the side. The side cable exit is absolutely not a problem, but the one above the motherboard tray kind of really sticks out in this white frame and removing it helps a bit visually. And with my single radiator, as you can see, the top feels kind of empty. I would definitely install fans up there for exhaust and uh, intake fans at the bottom just to drive some fresh air for the GPU. And this frame for an air cooler would not really make sense without some front intake. So the dynamic version is aimed for water cooling only. I do want to mention this team group memory that I've been using for a couple of builds now. It looks absolutely fantastic, not just in this like white chassis, but also combine it with a white motherboard. It will look absolutely amazing. This like laser-like effect coming down with the LEDs looks awesome. And uh, it's Aura compatible, so I can control it directly from my Asus motherboard. So if you guys are interested in this team group memory, check it out below. Now, in terms of cable management, man, what an upgrade over the original O11. So here, not only do we have so much uh, just space to put any of your cables behind the motherboard tray or in front of the power supply, but uh, we have these nice large rubber grommets so you can pass anything without any issues and cable tie points spread kind of all around here so you can uh, kind of secure everything to the case and uh, make it, you know, it doesn't have to be super flat, but uh, this works. The only thing is you have to route your, let's say, cables behind the power supply before you actually populate the power supply because, um, uh, otherwise, you won't be able to route anything behind it. And the only inconvenience with this whole cable management thing would be this drive bracket because, uh, well, they've removed the swivel joint that allows the bracket to pop out and you can, you know, route your cables. So now it's kind of standalone attached at the bottom and at the top. So you would need to pre-route your drives with SATA before actually installing this thing back into the case. Also, I want to say that the SSD mount is not ideal because right now the SATA power cable is kind of on an angle because the SSD is completely flat against the the bracket so I wish that we had slightly thicker rubber pieces so that we could offset the SSD higher to avoid this uh, SATA incompatibility 
with mounting. I do love how this cleans up though. This drive bracket certainly covers up that entire section from the power supply for this really cool look. Uh, obviously, I would populate the side panel back on there, but uh, for example, if you want to put the glass panel on there because they are backwards compatible, you know, you still have this really clean aesthetic on this side too. All right, so now it's time to do some preliminary temperature testing with this case. I've only had it for two days, so I would like to spend more time on the temperature side of things. Uh, so a second video will be coming up. So let me know what type of configuration for radiator and fans you'd like to see tested. So that's gonna come in the second video. But right now, let's see what type of temperature we get with just exhausting air with that 360 all-in-one. Uh, see what uh, our CPU and GPU stays at after an hour. All right, so after 50 minutes of torture testing, my temperatures are pretty impressive here with the CPU remaining at 72 degrees Celsius. And just to give you a little comparison, that is only two degrees hotter than me testing it on a case that has no front panel. So having zero intake and it's performing just as good as it would on a case without the front panel, that's pretty good. But also impressive is the GPU below 80 degrees Celsius at load, so I'm at like 78, 79 degrees Celsius, which is awesome. All the cases that I've tested this card with ran about 84 degrees Celsius, so uh, really good temperatures. I don't know what's happening inside, but really can't wait to populate more fans to see how we can improve that airflow. And in my second video, I'll also be testing out their vertical GPU bracket. So this is an optional accessory. It sells for $60, which is a little pricey. So the thing is, because there are no like vertical PCI brackets on here, you have to replace the entire wall of the PCI. Uh, so that uh, gives you some limitations. But um, for my particular scenario with this blower style GPU, we'll see if it makes any difference in cooling. And so, um, yeah. I'll test it in the second video. All right, so for my concluding remarks, all I gotta say is, damn, Lee and Lee, well done. The name is still kind of weird, PC011 Dynamic, but it does improve on all fronts versus the original. And the price point of 129, that's pretty damn good for a dual chamber layout, a water cooling ready enclosure that looks beautiful, it's elegant, you know, it's, it's different. And um, I just feel like they're pushing towards that pre-order price of $99. And if this case launched at $99, that would have been so good. But still, uh, for the black version, for the next two weeks, if you guys are interested, make sure to pre-order it to save you some cash. And we haven't actually given out an award in a while because everything just feels kind of stagnant, but this feels fresh and we're giving it the Hero Canucks damn good award. All right, everyone, this is it for me. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think of the PCO 11 Dynamic and I can't wait to show you what the air will deliver later. Bye.